Hello, everybody. Uh, six o'clock. Let's get started. And welcome back after the spring break. Hopefully, you all have a very relaxing week last week and ready for the next sprint in this semester. All right. Um, any question before we start today? No, nothing. Okay. Uh, so this is after this midterm, post midterm, we usually shift our gear uh, to understand more details inside the processor. Like uh, so far before the midterm, it was more like an assembly program and exploring the computer hardware and understanding the processor behavior through the assembly programming. Uh, but now on, uh, what we'll do, our main quest will become like how a processor executes the program. And this is really the first part of it, this rest of the semester. And we'll continue on this quest on the CS147 computer architecture study. Uh, so this is a shift in paradigm, shift in thinking process radically. So far, what we have done uh, it will be in the background, but we'll explore more on this uh, on this way that to understand how we the, these given a software program, how a processor executes that programs and give us the result. And this this class we will uh, limit ourselves in discussing about the arithmetic function. Right, you have. Uh, done this integer arithmetic function uh, using them inside the program, like add, add subtract, uh, multiplication, division, etc. <clears throat> now, the question is how really the processor, or specifically saying ALU, arithmetic and logic unit, how does it compute this result of this addition or subtraction, multiplication or division, given these two value, input value and operation code? So we'll see about that. And in that journey, what I think you will realize there is not a shred of mathematical sense inside the computer, inside processor. Everything is about logical operation, everything. There is no fundamental addition operation or subtraction operation that goes into uh, the processor itself or ALU inside the ALU. Inside ALU, everything is done using the logical operation. Logical operations are the fundamental operations in any computing system. Uh, this logical operation includes AND, OR, NOT. I think many of these logical operations you have used in your programming, at the high level programming, like for example, you have done, I'm pretty sure like some conditional block, like if A equal equal B and uh, C equal equal D do something, like right? this is an and logical and between two conditions. We are talking about that logic actually, but in terms of like a Boolean algebraic view or logic view, many most, all of you should uh, have this math 42 or 42x equivalent, uh, where one part is the logic study of the logics, where uh, it, it was main, maybe called Boolean algebra, maybe a logic algebra, but it is more like those conjunction, disjunction, negation operation in terms of math. We call in this world, digital logic world, we call them like an and operation, or operation, not operation. And we'll see uh, that uh, there are more operation, uh, like a NAND, NOR, XOR, et cetera. We'll go about that gradually one by one. And we will review somewhat this Boolean algebra, which is kind of a review of your Math 42, that logic part of it. And on top of that, we will study some more in conjunction, in relation with the digital logic and how with using the logic components, electronic components, how we can build up an ALU, arithmetic logic unit, which can give you answer of the simple integer arithmetic like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So this is 
those studies will make in next uh, sets of lectures and, and study notes. Please go about that. And we, today you are supposed to complete that uh, first part of the Boolean algebra, which includes the concept of the truth table, uh, Boolean function concept, get level, uh, like some of the basic logic gates. We'll talk about that more in that. Okay, so um, uh, any questions so far? No, okay. Um, so maybe I can just ask one or two questions to you guys. Uh, let me see if there is a RTM. RTM, can you tell us uh, what are the basic values and operations of the Boolean algebra? By basic values, you mean like zero for no and one for yes? Yeah, those things, basic values and the basic, what are the basic operations? Values are the logic you say, zero and one, true and false, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, false and true. Uh, then what are the basic logic operations? Just and, or, and not. Yeah, those three. Exactly. Thank you very much, Tim. So, <clears throat> yeah, so those are the things. Like, you, everything is uh, expressed in terms of uh, logical true, logical false. And those uh, value we represent in digital logic world as a one and zero. Like, one for true, zero represent false condition. And we have these operations, and I think it's in the math world, it's called uh, conjunction, uh, then or disjunction, and uh, not is a negation operation. So everything inside this processor is built up on this basic logic function. And then, about um, hmm. Troy Perry's, is it Troy today? Let's see. Yeah, Troy Perry's. Uh, can you uh, like kind of explain to us uh, what is a truth table? Um, a truth table shows all variables and shows all possible um, combinations of those variables. So if it's three variables, there'll be eight combinations. And then it also shows um, the function, um, whether it's true or false at the end. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so basically in a sense that truth table represents the logic function itself. So we need to understand like we can express or represent the logic function in terms of Boolean expression or in uh, terms of truth table. And let me try to explain this concept a little bit more on the whiteboard. Uh, this is my whiteboard, I'm showing that. Okay. So, uh, just give me a minute. Let me open up a tab to draw something. So let's say I have a Boolean function x, y, z, where fundamental uh, this log x, y, z are, are basically the uh, Boolean variable, uh, and which means which means uh, uh, this uh, this x, y, z can pick up logic value either zero or one. It cannot go beyond that. So either they can be true or false. Um, and we can express this function in terms of like, maybe some Boolean function x and y bar, or maybe z, something like that, right? This is, this is a notation for, uh, this is a notation for and, and this is a notation for inversion or not function, and this is a notation for or. Uh, so this is a function, uh, and the same function can be represented uh, with the truth table. 
uh, which basically, uh, as Troy said, it is represented with all the value, logic value combination of all the variables. And uh, then, uh, and one column, it represents the function outcome. Uh, so, okay, let me just hold on a minute. I'm just searching for my whiteboard. That's good. Okay, now this function, if you see, we can represent the same one using a table. Where we have all the variables. and the function, x, y, z function. And this one contains logical value of all different combination of x, y, z. So x, y, z can, so each variable can have uh, like two values, zero or one. We have three variables. So how many logic combination we can have? It's a combinational problem in maths. It's two to the power three, eight different combination. So we can write them down. Zero, zero, zero is one combination. Zero, zero, one is another combination. Zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, one. So these are the eight combinations that is max it can possible. So if the number of variables is three, is total number of rows max, I would say max, max rows, max number of rows is two to the power n. Why max? Because you'll see latter like not necessarily a truth table will have all the rows in it to express the function in digital circuit world, not in the math world. Math world definition, truth table has all the combinations. It has to be a very definite function. But in digital world, you will see there can be truth table which may not have all these two to the power in different rows. So, okay, so, so far so good. Any questions so far? So we have three, row, three columns. So number of rows is two to the power three, eight. Now we need to put them the function column. Function column, it will become like uh, one, 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 and zero. Yeah, I think this is this is the function. So sometimes people actually think uh, uh, this way, like as if like we derive we uh, derive uh, from given an expression based function representation to the truth table, but function representation. But uh, what I want to make sure you understand that truth table based representation can be can be reduced to a expression based function representation so they are not like derivative from one another it is more like a representation how you are representing a function either in expression form or in a truth table form but they are nonetheless they express they represents a boolean function and they can be derived from each other Derivation from a given expression to truth table is easier. Uh, harder problem is from a given truth table, how you derive the expression, that's the harder problem. And we'll learn that in the next lecture, uh, that, that conversion, all right? Question. Yeah, Professor. Yes, Shurak. Uh, so 
just to like make sure that like uh, the meaning of like the word function here so two distinct boolean functions can't can't share uh, a truth table right uh do distinct boolean function can what do you mean by that like like if you had one truth table could you map it to two distinct or two different boolean expressions no okay it is, it is unique for for a function it is unique basically okay yeah okay that makes sense yeah i think that was my only question so otherwise it, it will be it will we cannot claim otherwise like uh, this is a representation of a function either in a table form or expression form if the table form is not unique for every function right it has to be unique in that sense yeah that makes sense okay uh, what else All right, so in this lecture, you will find there are uh, these um, reduction rules, like we call it a identity rules and given a big expression, how we can make it smaller expression. Uh, so please go through that. Uh, for most of, you, most of you, it is probably a recap of your Math 42, uh, that reduction rule set. Uh, it's the same thing. Uh, please go with that one and make sure you can use it in reducing the function. Okay. Um, is there Patricia? Uh, Patricia Joe Saito? I am here. Hey, Patricia. Uh, can you tell us, like, there is this identity rule in this lecture which says that it is a X or Y whole bar is X bar and Y bar. What is that identity rule name? So this is like this X or Y whole bar is identical to X bar and Y bar. Oh, would that be the distributive property? This one? Uh, no. Or, um, wait, um, De Morgan's law. Yeah, exactly. This is De Morgan's law. Uh, so please make sure everyone uh, that you especially focus on that transformation. Uh, this is bread and butter in digital world and we use it very frequently. Okay, this transformation in digital logic circuit design. So make sure you understand that, make sure you know how to apply that rule. All right. Um, so now the question become one uh, thing that why we are interested in, in the reduction, okay? To uh, understand that part, what I need, uh, what I want to introduce to you is concept of this, this logic electronic component. Uh, so you are, you so far you are dealing with this Boolean expression, algebraic in a math form, it's all concept. Right, uh, but what in the reality world, what we can do is let's say there is this, this given function, we already talked of if um, x, y, z is x, y bar or z, we can build an electronic component, logic component, which actually, actually implement these logical function. What does it mean? Like, let's say we draw a component. Okay, let's say this is the electronic component. This box represents an electronic component and it do the function logical and, okay? <coughs> so this electronic component can take two logical input, let's say A and B, and give out a logical output from it. So it can take a logical out input like uh, zero, zero, and it will output zero, okay? And then it can do like uh, take 
one and one, it can logic output one. Okay, so let's build up a table a little bit. So if we, in this electronic component, if we give zero, zero, output is zero. If we give one, one, output is one. And if we give two input logical one and zero, output will become zero. And if we give one zero like this, our output will stay at zero, output will be still zero. And this is a truth table for logical and operation, okay? We can build this electronic component. This is the electronic component. And in this component, zero is absence of voltage. or current, whatever way you want to see it, because logical phenomena, voltage and current are the same logical phenomena. It's a, it's an absence of it, and one is a presence of it. Presence of voltage or current. And we build up an electronic component and output is also thus represented as absence of voltage, which is zero represents logical zero and presence of voltage, which represent logical one. So in that way, we can build up these electronic component and this specific one we talked about is drawn very specifically like this. And everyone knows in the world, this is a logical AND gate. So you don't need to like specify what the function in it uh, specifically, all right? So similarly, like this, we can like, we can build electronic component which does a logical OR operation, okay? And it's, it's if you recall the truth table for logical OR is Let's say A, B, Y, zero, zero is zero, zero is in one, one, zero is one, and one, one is one. So you can build up such electronic component, which if you supply this logical sense at the input side, your output will reflect a function of logical or. So if you give like a one here, your output will change to one immediately, the presence of voltage. And this logic gate is drawn universally as this. This is logical OR, everyone knows. So you don't need to specifically say this is an OR function. So if you draw this one as a schematic uh, uh, component, schematic block, Everyone knows you are talking about a OR gate here. Um, and similarly, we have this NOR, sorry, NOT, which is a single input, single output, zero is one, one is zero. And that logic component, electronic component is represented as this one, this is a NOT. Now talking about, now we know there are electronic component which can evaluate logic function. Then we can actually build up complex logic function. Make f x, y, z, x, y bar or z as this. So we pick up y. So let's say we are building a electronic component for this function f x y z given that and this is let's say x this is y this is z now what we need to do we need to invert the y to get a y bar 
and it with x and or it with z and that's your f so you use you use three electronic component or and and not get to implement this boolean function so now it comes to this point that if there are a big function x y z like x y bar z bar y x z bar and etc etc like this like an x y z so you see like to implement this function directly right uh, you need how many gets one and get two and get three and get four five and get one, two, three, four, four or get. Okay, I'm not talking about this four input or get or not. Uh, then we need couple of inverter, right? Uh, let's say this is this can be reduced to a form like x y bar z. It definitely needs less logical component than this one. Okay, so let's take a take a concrete example. Okay, let's take a concrete example. Let's say um, our function is uh, x, y, z, x, y, or x bar z, or y, z. So straight forward to implement this function, what you need? You need and to input and one, two, three, and you need um, or one and two or, and you need one inverter. So basically you can implement this circuit using like this, um, x, y, so this gives you x, y, then This gives you x bar z, okay, and then you have y z, y z, okay. Then straight you can do something like this, or or another or, so this is your function, right? Now what we can do on top of this, if we reduce this, you will see later how we can reduce it, but it will be reduced into something like x, y or x bar z. Uh, x bar z. Now is the same function, we can express it in a less number of terms. So that means the corresponding logic a circuit would become like this, x, y. So this becomes x, y. Then one inverter for x bar, z. And we get r. Now we see in the latter uh, uh, construction, we are using like uh, one, two, three, four, four gates, four logic gates. Whereas the previous one uses one, two, three, four, five, six, six logic gates. More the logic gates, remember these logic gates are the uh, are electronic component, like, and each of them has some cost associated with it like a real price, real price tag, right? So if you are your circuit, your function implementation using six logic gates, that means your circuit is costlier than the one which is using the four logic. So you see there is a business aspect related to this one of reduction 
an expression. So you get a big expression and if you can reduce it uh, effectively, which represent the same function, right? And then you can cut down the cost, manufacturing cost of your logic circuit in the other processor. You'll see that each processor is nothing but a combination of logic gates. Um, so you'll, you can reduce down the cost and thus you can increase your business, uh, more, business by selling more because there's a less pricey commodity on it. So that is the real impact of having something to apply Boolean reduction in the digital logic world. Question. Okay, so then let's take a five minute break at this point and we'll be back on 6.36.
okay uh, let me restart all right welcome back uh, now we have a uh, couple of times uh, okay uh, midterms midterms so i'm done with the with the grading of the midterm and let me share the distribution of points okay so this is your class distribution looks like it's out of 100 your max is 98.4 uh, with the median 77.5 i believe many of you are in this range 80 to 100 this range a uh, couple of guys are in these points and um, average is below pass mark because of some people hasn't done that fair in this exam. However, uh, overall picture doesn't look that grimy. Um, about 19% is A minus or better in the class, uh, but Again, more than 20% is actually D plus or below, uh, which is like a kind of failing grade. But remember, this is without your bonus point, this marks, okay? So with the bonus point, I'm sure this spectrum will be shifted towards the right and more people will come into A minus or better places. And D plus hopefully will be consumed in the, in the passing grade of C minus or better on this and we'll see how, what happens to these five people. I know like a couple of them have like given up, probably planning for a late drop and stuff like that. Uh, so we'll watch out what's going on. But most of you are doing fairly okay uh, overall. Uh, max total point so far without the bonus point is 100%, average 76 with a median 84.1%. Question? I will publish the result after this class, or maybe uh, maybe tonight sometime, sometime tonight, okay? So tomorrow morning probably we'll get when you come back. Rahul, you want to say something? I was about to start speaking. Uh, I mean, I, I just opened the results on a separate tab and I, was looking at the practice midterm results instead. Did not realize I was looking at the practice midterm and I had a question. <laughs> but then I realized I'm looking at practice midterm, which- yet. I haven't published yet. I usually, yeah. I wanted to uh, like uh, give you the distribution first, class distribution and discuss that points uh, because I don't want anybody to freak out by looking at their own grade or own points. So that's why this, okay, this came up, like what is your distribution, class distribution of the point? All right, so yeah, tonight I will publish that, that grades. So another important thing, your project has been published. Um, so this is an interesting project and it may take some time and it has a reporting component as well. So please make sure you go through that, uh, that project and start up front, okay? So in a nutshell, what we'll do will implement what we'll study in the module, uh, like uh, the one is upcoming, uh, let me see. Yeah, this module, module seven, arithmetic component. And here in this three lecture, 18, 19, 20, we'll study about the uh, logical implementation of this mathematical function of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And we'll implement that in the project. Okay, we'll implement that in the project. So this project will implement uh, assembly program, which is not from scratch. I have given you many, many parts to you. You need to elaborate on top of that. Mostly there are two files you need to concentrate on or modify. This is the one. One is the normal ALU and one is the logical ALU. So normal ALU is that is easy. Like you can do it right now. Okay, you download the code, change the code and do it. Normal ALU, basically what it does, it checks the operands sent to it like a, like a character plus minus uh, multiplication or division. 
and jump to corresponding section of the code, which use the usual uh, arithmetic function of the assembly available, like usual add, usual sub, sub, mult, and div operation to compute the result and return back from that procedure. So that, that is the AU normal, okay? The main part is the AU logical. What it does, it basically uh, see, take two operands and look at, and also an oper operation code, which is like a character code for it. It's ASCII code for those characters. It checks whether plus minus uh, multiplication or division has been supplied and calls the corresponding logical computation procedure uh, for those operations. And those procedure does not use this basic add sub mult or uh, give operation, but uses the existing logical operation set that has been provided in MIPS, which probably has uh, nor, it has and, it has not, you need to see what are the function, logical function you provided. But you need to implement this using all the logical function available and don't use any arithmetic operation. So that's the challenging part of it. And you need the concept of the lecture, those lecture, I think 18, 19, 20, or maybe 17, 18, 19, 19 I forgot. Like, anyway, uh, also um, you, have, I have some project guidelines, so you may want to watch this. This is basically gives you the strategies and steps to implement this logical ALU. Uh, this is a guideline, you can choose another route uh, to implement the same thing. Uh, but this is, uh, this is just one of the route, one of the possibilities and what I have seen if people follow these steps, they usually don't run into much problem in like something is not functioning, it's not, uh, they don't run into difficult debugging. That's what I, I say. I have seen like uh, many times people who does not follow this guideline often run into some trouble later and uh, um, run into some tricky debugging situation. Okay, but it's up to your judgment what you, uh, would like to do. However, I would strongly recommend to go through this project guide, watch them carefully and maybe follow them. Okay. And okay, um, what else? Okay, there is this reporting component of it. So this is equally important. Implementation is carries half like 50% of the project point and reporting is and other 50% of the project uh, point. And don't think that let's say you are unable to implement or something is not working in the implementation side. Uh, don't, uh, don't get like um, worried, worried about that situation because you have the other half already, like in the project report, you can always specify that, okay, it is not working. This is what I'm debugging. This is my, I think the problem is, but it is not working till now. So at that point, if you honestly report what has happened, you can still get like full marks on the report, reporting side. Okay, so don't get discouraged to write a good report, reflecting your exact what situation you are going on in your project and what is your status even if your implementation doesn't work, okay? But you need to be honest on your status on that report, okay? It's not working, it's not working, that's a life, right? It's not working, you need more time to debug and all this stuff. So that's the point I want to raise. One more point, there is a sample report. I have given two report, like kind of a reference to you. It is more like you look at that, uh, to learn how to write a good report and then forget about this means not forget about not the structure but forget about the exact wording don't do a control c control v from these reports okay that's the plagiarism and we have a strict rule there your similarity score uh, have to be 25 percent or less if it is more than that it will be reported to university as plagiarism so make sure you work on your own on writing this project. Question. 
Um, I don't think we can access the uh, the project because it's locked in module seven. Mm. Or... Oh, really? Yeah, it's not letting me see it. Six months. Oh, what you can do, you can actually click on the study materials. Just, uh, yeah, just make, yeah, oh, okay. it canvas yeah. that, hey, I am done with this, this study material, then it will unlock the value for you. There's a quick bypass trick. Yeah, yeah that works. Okay, other question. All right, if there is no other question, then we can stop tonight and see you on, all on Thursday.